the entire industry is moving from a probabilistic measurement environment to a deterministic measure environment. And that's going to enable us to move from you know, reach and frequency terms to actually outcome terms. So did this advertising do something and drive a consumer to visit a website or go to a store or to buy a product? And I think that's what's going on. And I think uh, we're excited about it because I think at the end of the day, we want to be able to prove the value of what we're delivering for our, our brand customers. So tell us a little bit how that works, you know, what you guys do working with vendors, um, the, the, the results that you provide, uh, when you provide them. Right. So I guess part of that question, or part of the answer to that question is that as a media seller, we need to be careful because we don't want to grade our own homework. So we work with a number of customer, a number of partners to be able to measure attribution. Um, TV Squared is one of them, and I think that they, especially for the D to C space or to um, to advertisers that want to drive people to a, an online activity, they're a fantastic partner. So tell us a little bit about what um, what's involved with measurement, sort of. What are those pieces and how do you work with a vendor? Yeah, so I think it, what's happening is it, it's, an, it's an evolution. So if you go way back in the day when, you know, marketing mix modeling was the, the answer to attribution, you would get sales as a function of everything you would do as a marketer, distribution, price, promotion, and TV activity. You would get all that data into one spot. You would harmonize it and then you would, you would you know, run regression models against it. And that would be a year-long project and it would cost a lot of money. I think what's happening now, because activity data, whether it's ad exposure data, or whether it's website visitation data, or whether it's POS data coming from a retailer, all that's just being passively collected at scale. So it's really a, not a modeling exercise, but a, a, a lining up of exercise and making sure that you can attach ad exposure at a household level to an activity, and, and these guys are doing a great job of that. So what's this, what are some of the specific needs in the local marketplace where you guys play? So I don't think it's any different than the national players, you know, just at a smaller scale. So if I'm, you know, Ford Motor Company, I'm sending a national brand out, I want to drive awareness, I want to drive traffic, I want to drive sales. If I'm a local car dealership, I want to drive awareness, I want to drive traffic, and I want to drive sales. They're just doing it at a different level. And maybe one is a branding message and one is a transactional message, you know, $1,500 $1,500 off today, or you know, you get a free watch if you come visit our store and take a test drive. I don't know, but so so it's a different part of the same campaign, but it's at different stages of the customer journey. And what about delivering performance reports? Um, it used to be, I think, where it took quite a long time. How is that window changing? That window of uh, of time. I, mean, I think we'll get to a day where it's you know always on real time measurement. I mean, real time. I don't mean to the split second, but I think we're going to get to a, a day where the that exercise of marketing mix modeling is going to be collapsed from a year long exercise into you know it's into weeks and then into days and then into hours. And we're already seeing that people are already pushing the envelope on that. So. How does this all change the attractiveness or viability of local advertising? Um, I, I know that it's, it's a big industry now. Where could it go? How could performance, this kinds of um, measurement help the local industry? Well, it's all part of the same addressable messaging where an addressability is you want increased precision. You can do that geographically or you can do that in the network program or date, date part of program. Um, so I think it's a, it's a push into that environment and having the metrics to tie ad exposure to activity is, is what's really going to sum it up for an advertiser. So big year coming up, big election year. Um, how does that look? What are the opportunities? Um, uh, there's a lot of projections that there'll be a lot of money in there, but what do you think the expectations are will be of, of advertisers um, uh, that might change or you might be asked uh, going into the, uh, the cycle? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think, that, you know, as a consumer or somebody that watches television, it's pretty annoying to see all those political campaigns, but as an ad seller, it's fantastic to see that. So, I, I, I mean, it's a dichotomy I have. Um, I, I think that, you know, right now there's a lot of candidates, um, at least at the national level, and I think they're all collecting money. So, I think they're getting, you know, there's going to be a big pot of money that's being going to be spent early in next year. I think that will put pressure on inventory as we think about advertisers trying to squeeze themselves into the pressure that's coming from the political arena. Um, so I think next year will be an interesting year for advertising. You know, unless the economy falls apart, we should have a good year, both the Olympics and the politics and the political year. 
And finally, uh, some thoughts about you know where advanced TV is going. We've been talking about addressable TV. We've been talking about household. We've been talking about device. Uh, there's a lot of tools, a lot of data sets that are available. There's also a lot of walled gardens that seem to be growing different tech stacks. Right. Uh, what's exciting to you and maybe what has you concerned perhaps? I think we talked about this last time. I think, you know, um, my, my joke used to be, you know, addressability will happen in my lifetime and now it, I say the century because I think we need a longer runway. But I do feel that um, the media, the TV media ecosystem recognizes that we need to neutralize the competitive advantage that digital has in data targeting and measurement. Uh, I think the media owners have the reach. NBC can reach any household in the country with a portfolio of products um, and the distribute, but they don't have the first party relationship. They don't have the name address, and that's why Viacom's out there, you know, buying a Pluto or NBC's, you know, building their own app and ABC's consolidating the Hulu under their umbrella. Um, the distributors have the first party relationship, but not the reach. So I think we feel, NBC, NCC Media feels, that we need to work together um, as an industry to make this happen, rather than having a, a walled garden.